Medicines help us feel better and stay healthy as they reduce or eliminate pain, help fight infections and control diseases such as high blood pressure or diabetes among many other benefits. However, they can also cause negative reactions due to allergies, interactions, incorrect doses and expiration dates. Let's analyze each of those points. To watch the Spanish version of this video, you can find a link in the description box. A drug allergy is an abnormal reaction of the immune system to that drug. All medicines have the potential to cause allergies, but some are more likely to do so. For example, antibiotics such as sulfa drugs and penicillins and pain relievers, including aspirin, ibuprofen and naproxen. An allergy can manifest as urticaria or as angioedema. Urticaria, also known as hives, consists of welts that appear and disappear in a matter of minutes or hours anywhere on the surface of the skin. Hives can be itchy and uncomfortable, but they are generally harmless, don't leave scars, and fade spontaneously or with specific treatment. Urticaria mainly affects the dermis, which is the most superficial layer of the skin. However, in 50% of cases, inflammation of the subcutaneous tissue and mucous membranes also develops, which is called angioedema. In angioedema, swelling usually occurs in the eyelids, lips, genitalia or back of the hands and feet. Much less frequently, the tongue and larynx can become inflamed. The most serious situations are those of the laryngeal angioedema, since they can evolve into shortness of breath difficulty swallowing and breathing problems, in which case immediately medical attention is required in an emergency service. An angioedema that doesn't affect breathing can be uncomfortable, but it's harmless. Slightly pruritic is accompanied by a feeling of tightness and disappears in a few days. The treatment of hives and uncomplicated angioedema includes general measures, natural remedies or drugs. General measures include avoiding the substance that is causing the allergy if known, bathing with water that is colder than hot, and don't wear tight clothing that causes further irritation. On the other hand, the most practical and effective natural remedies are the following. 1. Chamomile and valerian tea. To prepare this formula, you will need 1 tablespoon of dried chamomile flowers, 1 tablespoon of dried valerian root, one cup of water equivalent to 250 milliliters and honey to taste. The water is heated until it boils, then the fire is turned off and the chamomile and valerian are placed. The container is covered. The preparation is left to rest until it's lukewarm. It's passed through a strainer, the honey is added and it's ready to drink. 2. Turmeric and black pepper tea. To make this infusion you need 1 tablespoon grated or powdered turmeric, 1 third tablespoon of black pepper, 1 cup of water and honey to taste. Heat the water and when it starts to boil, add the turmeric and pepper. Let it continue to boil for 3 to 5 minutes. Then let it rest, strain, add the honey and that's it. And 3. Green tea with lemon. Ingredients 1 tablespoon of dried green tea leaves the use of half a lemon and one cup of water. Its preparation consists of heating the water and removing it from the heat when it starts to boil. Place the green tea and let it rest until it warms up. Then pass it through a strainer, add the lemon juice and that's it. Whichever tea is chosen, it's recommended to drink one to two cups per day until the problem is resolved. For those who prefer allopathic medicine, oral H1 antihistamines are the drugs of choice. It's recommended to start with a non-sedating H1 antihistamine, that is, second generation, such as loratadine or cetirizine. In mild or moderate cases, the use of a single medication is usually sufficient. However, if the response is not adequate, a first generation H1 antihistamine can be added, for example, chlorphenamine or diphenhydramine. But it must be kept in mind that the main side effect of this is that they cause drowsiness, so the patient shouldn't drive or operate dangerous machinery. Important, in the event of an angioedema that compromises the integrity of the individual or of one more manifestation of anaphylaxis, 
the patient should be sent immediately to the emergency room. On the other hand, a medicine can interact with another medicine, with food or with a pre-existing disease, causing undesirable side effects. Here are some examples of drug interactions when used simultaneously with another. One, aspirin potentiates the effect of oral anticoagulants, heparin and thrombolytic agents, which can cause severe bleeding. Two, metoclopramide antagonizes butylhyosine so that the joint use cancels the effect of both. And three, the effect of quinolones, for example, ciprofloxacin decreases between 25 and 90% when taken together with products containing calcium, aluminium, magnesium, iron or zinc cations such as antacids, nutritional supplements, multivitamins or sucralfate. Let's now see some effects of the interaction of a drug with food or drink. 1. The consumption of acetyl salicylic acid in patients who frequently drink alcoholic beverages may cause gastric bleeding. 2. Alcohol consumption can increase the depressant effects of metoclopramide on the central nervous system. And 3. Grapefruit juice decreases the rate at which the body breaks down levastatin, simvastatin, and atravastatin, which are used to lower cholesterol, thereby increasing the side effects of these medications. Regarding the interaction of a drug with a pre-existing disease, we have, for example, 1. The diuretics hydrochlorothiazide and furosemide raise uric acid levels, so they're not recommended in patients with gout. 2. In people with gastric ulcer, NSAIDs such as Ketorolac can cause bleeding or perforation in the stomach or intestine. And 3. In hypertensive individuals, nasal decongestions further raise blood pressure. As for the wrong doses of medications, a low dose makes their use useless, but an overdose causes toxicity, which in most cases is limited to a particular organ, for example, in the liver, hepatotoxicity, in the kidneys, nephrotoxicity, and in the bone marrow, myelotoxicity. Doses that are too high can be fatal. This is the reason why Paracelsus, renowned physician of the Middle Ages, made the famous statement that the dose is only what separates a medicine from a poison. Regarding expired medicines, there are too many concerns. One, loss of efficacy, in which case the drug is no longer curative, and two, toxicity due to formation of harmful degradation products. One of the best known examples of drug expiration is that of tetracycline, an antibiotic that if consumed after its expiration date, can cause a kidney disease called Fanconi syndrome. Another example is acetyl salicylic acid, that is aspirin, which degrades after its expiration and forms salicylate, which is highly abrasive. Based on the above, we conclude with the following recommendations. 1. Do not self-medicate, much less during pregnancy. 2. Remember if you are allergic to a medicine and mention it every time you go to the doctor. 3. Don't take several medications at the same time unless prescribed by a doctor and four, don't share medicines because each person can react differently to the same drug. Well, that's all for now. I hope you find this information useful. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.